everyone, April Dunham here. In this video, I'm going to share my top three use cases for the HTML control in Power Apps. But first, here's the intro. I'll start with the first use case, which is probably the most obvious, and that's custom visuals. If you've been using Power Apps a while, you know that you're a little bit limited to what you can do design-wise out of the box. However, the HTML control gives us a little bit more flexibility there. To add in an HTML control, click on the text button and select HTML text. What this control allows you to do is put in and inject HTML and inline CSS into your Power App. And I highlight the inline CSS piece of this because we can inject CSS styles into here and reference those via classes or attributes. So we can only do that inline. So that is one limitation. And then also with the HTML control, we can't inject any JavaScript or anything like that. It's just straight HTML and inline CSS. But even with that, there's a lot that we can do, especially from the visualization side of things. So one use case that I like to use this for is anywhere that I need a button. So if we look at a normal button in Power Apps, you'll see that there's only so much that we can do with it. We can change the color, the border radius, the outline, stuff like that. But what if you want a nice shading to your button? In CSS, this is called a box shadow. So let's take a look at how we can create our own customized button with the HTML control. So I already have one in here, so I'm just gonna make this visible. Uh, we can see that the HTML button that I have just looks so much nicer than the Power Apps button. We have this nice rounded corners, but then this subtle shaded overlay in the background, thanks to that box shadow property in CSS. So to use the HTML control, you'll just go to its HTML text property and you'll paste in your HTML here wrapped around in quotes. Now this means that anywhere in your HTML where you would traditionally have double quotes, like when you're referencing a style property, you need to change those to single quotes instead since you're wrapping that in the double quotes. But what we have here is just a very simple few lines of HTML to get this effect. We have a div where we apply some inline styles using that border radius property. So we're defining a border radius of 25 and a box shadow effect here. Then we just have a span and we're pulling in some images. So another tip when it comes to Power Apps design is if you want your Power App to look a little bit more stylistic and not so recognizable as being a Power App, then use external icons. So I've just went out to a website, Icons8, where you can get some free icons and reference that in an image property within this HTML. And then I'm just hard coding in some text below that to create this nice button. Now, one thing you might notice though, in our Power Apps button, if I hover over it, the cursor changes so that I know that that's a clickable button. Well, we can make our HTML button do that as well. And that's this property you might have noticed in the HTML called cursor pointer. So you can define when you hover over something that the cursor should change to a pointer. And also, so right now everything's hard coded. So you might ask, well, what if I need to dynamically pull in, say the icon or the text that displays here for the button? Well, we can do that also. So I'll just come in here and add a text input control and say that we want our button name to be whatever is in this text input. We can come into our HTML and just kind of in the quotes here where the text should be, put in an ampersand and then an ampersand and a quote after. So we're gonna kind of wrap that in there so it's concatenated. And then now we can pull in dynamic information from the Power App. So I can go directly to that text input and get its text value. So now you see real time, whatever is in that HTML changes. So if I were to just run this and change the text input, it's updated in my button. And with this HTML control, we can do all the things that we could do with our normal Power Apps controls. So we can come in here, go to its on select property and have this button navigate us somewhere that could be to a different screen, or we could use something like the launch command to make it open an external website. Now I've added this HTML control just standalone here within my app, but you can also use these within galleries as well. So if I come in here and add in a gallery and I'll bind that to something, we can insert in our gallery one of those HTML controls. And let's just copy the HTML text from the one that I created earlier and we'll paste that in there. I'm just gonna make a few tweaks to the design of my gallery here. 
I'll change the wrap count to three so they kind of stagger a little bit across the screen. So now we can just change the text in the HTML control. Instead of pointing to that text input, we can point it to this item to get the reference from the gallery and pull in whatever information from the data source that we want to pull in. So now we have dynamic buttons that are pulling the title from the items in the gallery. So multiple ways that you can use this. All right, now let's look at use case number two, which is displaying rich text. This particularly comes into handy when you're talking about rich text fields in your SharePoint list. So let's look at a use case here. I'm just gonna come in and add a new screen and we'll insert another gallery, bind this to a data source that I have. Well, let's take a look at my data source first so that you can see what I'm talking about here. And in this list, one of the fields I have is description HTML. So when I set this up, I went in and added a new column. I chose multiple lines of text and expanded out this more options. And I enabled this use enhanced rich text. When you do that, it allows you to put rich text in the column. So if we look at this item, for example, you'll see that this is a multi-line, but it's just plain text. So I can't make anything bold or do ULs and LIs, but in the enhanced text one, I can. So if you look here, I'm able to make things bold and put list items and things like that. Now the problem with this is when you're trying to consume it in Power Apps is this is actually stored as HTML. So if I were to come back in here into my Power App and want to display that information, so if I just came into my gallery, edited my fields and made this subtitle field, for example, be my description HTML, look what we get here. It's all of this nasty HTML that we don't want. So what we can do instead is delete this label control and insert the HTML control. And we'll just bind its HTML text to that field in our gallery. So we'll say this item dot description HTML. Now we have that data from our SharePoint data source, all nicely formatted with the HTML, with the bullets and the bolding and everything that we have in there. So this is great for just displaying the data. If you need to be able to also edit it, um, then you'll need a different kind of control. So that is this, let's delete this HTML control. That's this rich text editor control. So this is the control that gives you the ability to edit that. All right, and on to the last use case for the HTML control, and that is printing. So as of the time of this video, so early June, 2020, there isn't any built-in mechanism to print in Power Apps. So one of the common workarounds that you'll see that a lot of us in the community do is to leverage the HTML control so that we can pass that HTML to Power Automate and print the document. So let's take a look at a simple use case of that. So in my training portal, I can click on one of these trainings and it'll take me to a detail page. So say I want to print out details about this particular training, the duration, speakers, and the categories. So let's just add in a button here. I'll just add in any button for now. It doesn't really matter. Just want to show the functionality. So this will act as our print button. Now what we can do is we can come in and insert one of those HTML controls and build out our HTML for how we'd want the data to be printed out. So in the background of this, I have a property called selected course that is keeping in a variable the information about the selected item. So I can just use that in my HTML. So I can come in here and build out the HTML how I'd like to see it. And so I got my HTML formatted, so let's just make sure it's working. I'm gonna go back to my homepage, select one of these items. And now we can see here's the information about it. So it's nicely formatted with the title, the category, and the description. Now, once you have that HTML control in here, you just really want to have it in the background, but your users don't see it if you're using it just for printing. So we can just set that visibility to off. And then we can pass this data now to flow with the click of a button. So in Power Automate, you'll want to do a new instant type of flow and choose the Power Apps option. So we can come in here and add in a variable that will store our HTML. Make sure it's a string, and then we can use the ask in Power Apps so that we can pass that from Power Apps into here. And then we can use the OneDrive connector to create a file. So just point it to a location in your OneDrive, give the file a name, 
pass it the content, which will be our HTML. So that'll create the HTML file, but then we want to convert this. So we'll probably want it to be a PDF. So we can also use OneDrive again here, but use the convert file action to take what we just created and convert it to a PDF so that we can easily print it. So from here, we could do something like take this file and upload it to SharePoint or Azure Blob Storage, wherever you might need. So we can use the create file action in SharePoint, point it to our site and library, and just point the file content to the converted file content. And then we can just add in a respond to power apps action, add an output of text file, call this file link, and then we can pass in the path of the file that we just created. So let's save this. And we'll go back to our Power App and we'll add that in to initiate when we click the button. Now I want to get the link to the file in the app. So when I call the flow, I want to set that in a variable. Now let's look at how to add the flow first. So we'll click on our button and we'll go to Action, Power Automate, and find the print flow that we just created. So we see the one input that it's expecting and that's the HTML. So we can just put in our HTML control that we added which is just HTML text eight, and then do a dot HTML text so that we pass in the text from that control. And this will execute it, but we wanna get the value that's returned, so that link to the file. So what we'll do is we'll set a variable called file link to the output of when we run this. So if we do a dot after this flow call, you'll see that that output parameter shows. So there's our dot file link. All right, so then what I'll do is I'll come in here and we'll do an insert. And let's use our HTML control again. But this time we'll just point this to our file link. And we'll make it a clickable link here. And also with this HTML property, you notice the text is black and I have a black background. Uh, rather than writing out the color in line, I can actually come in here and use my Power Apps colors to change that. So just a quick tip there. All right, so let's test this out. I'm going to click our button here so we can kind of vaguely see the little dots up there. So that means that it's running in the background. And we can always come back to Flow and check our run history and just to make sure that it ran successfully, which it did. That's good. So now if I come here, I should be able to click this link and open up the document. Now, uh, the path, it looks like, is only getting the folder location and the file name. So I could change that to actually look up the file name, or if I, in my case, since I know where I'm uploading it, I'm just gonna cheat so that it works here and copy the URL of my site and kind of merge the two together here. So now if we play this and click on that, here is my nicely formatted PDF that I can now print. That was just a very simple use case of the HTML control. There's so much more you could do with this as far as, you know, um, injecting images or pulling out data in a table from your galleries. So many different things that you can do and it can get really complex, but I just wanted to show the basic use for it and how you can take it, pass it into Power Automate and get a printable PDF. I'll probably have another video in the future showing some more advanced scenarios of this, but for now, just wanted to, to leave you with this. The HTML control is one of my favorite controls just because of the benefits that you can get from it from a UI and branding standpoint. And it can also help the performance of your app because some of the things that you would need to do, like adding some shadows and multiple layers for dialogues, cause you to have a lot of different controls. And the more controls you have in your Power App, the more bloated. So oftentimes with that HTML control, you can limit what might have taken five to 10 different controls into one. And then obviously being able to pull in that rich text and use it as a printing mechanism just makes it even better. I hope you found these top three use cases for the HTML control helpful, and I hope it inspired you to start using the HTML control in your applications. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.